welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where lying is the order of the day. On Lee's team tonight, it's an actress who's uh, well used to lying. How else could she convince the nation she enjoyed kissing Sid Owen? It's Patsy Palmer! <laughs> and uh, an actor who, uh, who, after starring in the movie In the Loop, is now on first-name terms with James Gandolfini. Unfortunately, James thinks he's called Steve and works in the props department. <laughs> it's Chris Addison! <laughs> And on David's team tonight, we have a comedian with the looks of a Greek god and the morals of a Greek waiter. It's John Bishop! <laughs> and, you know, I've had the honour of working with some great comic actresses in my time. But putting that to one side, here's half of Gavin and Stacey, it's Joanna Page! <laughs> so... To round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Uh, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the truth from the tosh. Uh, Patsy, you're first. Uh, please reveal all. I got Wella the dog drunk on the set of EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> David's team, is she telling the truth? Right, what... Uh... What what was the What out? EastEnders? <laughs> <laughs> what? Thank you. Excellent. Um, uh, what's the alcohol in question? What did you, what vodka. were you? Vodka. Vodka. How much vodka? <sighs> it was just, you know, like a small glass. That's small, is it? Glass <laughs> <laughs> of vodka. How did the you... glass, it was one of those small round, like flat bottom. Little glasses. Um, just a glass, basically. You just described a glass. <laughs> How did so you get it in his mouth? No, I didn't put it in his mouth. We put it in his bowl. But... He thought it was water. Yeah. How far through it did he get before he <laughs> realised it wasn't the whole water? Bowl. I would have thought at some point in the drinking process, as a dog, you're going to go, something here is different. <laughs> so if you're a dog and you're used to drinking water and then you smell your, you smell your bowl, it's full of vodka, you think, well, this smells like a girl from Birmingham. It, uh, <laughs> it's clearly not water. Smell, that's it. That's what dogs do all the time. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Why have you got a bottle of vodka on the set of EastEnders? No, we didn't have a bottle of vodka, we just had a glass of vodka. It's not anymore, but when we first started working there, all of the bottles of drink in the pub were real alcohol. That strikes me as a flawed policy. <laughs> <laughs> not then. Now you couldn't yeah, have it, yeah. health and safety, but then there was real drink in the pub. Is that why Dan was so dirty? Because everyone was just pissed. <laughs> <I> mean... <laughs> The vodka is sufficiently diluted with the water that the dog doesn't notice. Yeah. And presumably the whole place is sticky of booze anyway, with all, what, with all the pissed-up actors forgetting their lines. <laughs> Just noticed that he went a little bit funny and he laid down. It wasn't like he was, like, punching people in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you know. He did get really worried because he kind of did lay down. He was very quiet and a bit like when he died. So we knew he could do that. <laughs> To be honest, I think it's true because it's the sort of thing I do. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. So what are you going to say? <laughs> you think it's? I think if if you haven't at some point tried to make a dog drunk, you're not normal. <laughs> I think we true. think that almost anyone, given enough time sitting in the same room with some vodka and a dog, <laughs> will either put the vodka in the dog or the other way around. <laughs> so we're saying true, I think. Yeah, yeah. saying it's true. Yeah. OK, Patsy Palmer, is it the truth or is it a lie? It's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> It is a big, big lie. Patsy did not get Wellard the dog drunk on the set of EastEnders. Of course, uh, Bianca was there when Wellard was put to sleep after eating a chocolate. Uh, she held him in her arms, sobbing as he died. And Patsy, they don't give Oscars for soap operas, but if they did, <laughs> eh, they'd have given one to Wellard, wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joanna, you're next. I recite my times tables every night before bed. Why? <laughs> um, because I th I've always been rubbish at maths. It just doesn't go in my head. My brain doesn't compute that way. And I can learn loads and loads of lines if I'm acting, but um, I've never <laughs> been able to get my times tables in. And I thought, before I die, I want to be able 
to do my times tables. And also, <laughs> when you go to a sale and you go shopping, um, when it says 75% off a dress or 40%, I can't work that out. I know a stick and I feel embarrassed because I'm sitting next to you and you've got a degree. I'm, I'm a famous mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, my secret identity is, is percentage man. <laughs> but I thought, I don't want to die and not be able to do my times tables. Could you recite them now, then? Before I go to bed, my husband lies next to me and I say, uh, I do them, and then I say... It's right, nice to see the romance, isn't it? <laughs> What do you start? What's the first one? It's not your two times table, is it? Yeah, it oh is. I've gone as far as about my six, and I get to seven. Don't go in. What's well, seven uh, times five? Um, I'm going to... Oh, God, this is so embarrassing. Right. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. <laughs> <laughs> that is why I'm doing it. That's why I'm learning that. Yeah, but you might have dyscalculus, like me, so you're not thick. I have what? Dyscalculus, same as dyslexia, so that's what I've got. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I've got shorterless. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Don't you come round here giving any of that sweetheart. You'll be barred from this bloody pub, all right? <laughs> but that is true. You might have that. You're not thick. Oh, yeah. any kids watching, you're not thick if you can't add up. Mm. Well, you're a bit thick, thick aren't you? Well, I mean, it's a bit late, isn't it? You're not bright, let's put it like that. <laughs> Do you, have, do you do it every single night without fail? Even if you come in really pissed, you still do it? You're getting on the times table? Yeah, does. yeah, I still try to do it, yeah. Oh, you God, if, if, the, if there's a dress for 80 quid and it says 50% oh, off, <laughs> will you struggle? Right, well, oh, this is right. No, that would be 40, 40 pounds, wouldn't it? Yeah. But I've got to check with you when I say it. I can't just say straight off. What I often find, actually, is in shops, when they take a percentage <laughs> off the original price, yeah. they will also tell you the subsequent <laughs> price. It's actually it's quite a minority of shops that make you work it out. <laughs> if you get it wrong, that's what you pay. <laughs> Charge. They go, I hope we don't get one of those discalculus people in. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was 50p. <laughs> so, Lee, what are you going to say? Is she you, telling you? What have you cracked? Which one I've do you cracked, think you've... I've cracked one, two, three, what? four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> do you mean you've learned how to count? <laughs> okay, you've cracked the ones, the twos. And, and, and I cracked seven the other night. Right, give us the seven times table. <laughs> but I can't do it now, I can't remember it. One seven is seven. Oh, this is all foul. This is like my worst nightmare. One seven is seven, two seven to fourteen, three seven to twenty-one, four seven to twenty-eight, five sevens. Now this is where it all foul. Five sevens to thirty-five, <laughs> six sevens to forty-two, seven sevens to forty. Right, this is forty-nine. Forty-nine. Eight sevens to fifty-four. 52? Higher. 56. <laughs> 56. 56. Okay. What was that? 9 7 to 56. 10 <laughs> 7 to 70. 11 7 to 77. No. 12 7 to 84. 84. 89. Right, so. Wait, 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 wait. So. Don't, don't get out. It's not a Jeremy Kyle show. It's a seven times table. I think this could be a cracking new round. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, is it the truth? I think it's. I think it's a lie. Why do you think it's a lie? Why would anybody do that at night? That's the last thing you need before you go to bed. I think it's true. Patsy thinks Patsy's it's true. Patsy's going to stick on true. We'll go with Patsy, though. All right, then, true. so, Joe, truth or lie? That is... True! <laughs> <laughs> well done, Patsy. Yes, it's true. Uh, actually, uh, Joe, I've got a mental arithmetic uh, problem for you. If you take one husband and recite multiplication tables at him seven nights a week, how many divorce lawyers will he need? <laughs> John, you're next. I had a job where we started each day with a motivational song. Lee's team. What, what was this job? It was... Don't give him time to think of the song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, job, the job was selling vacuum cleaners. What was the song? There was a few songs. Oh, it, uh, and what's your favourite? My favourite. Um, my favourite one was uh, we sell KB cleaners. We sell KB cleaners. So so we sell KB. <laughs> was it on the phone? Was it in a shop? No, it was. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was door to door <laughs> vacuum clean <laughs> cleaner selling. Door to door vacuum. What year was this? Nineteen forty-six. <laughs> 
Where was it? This would have been... One of my first jobs when I left school, so it would have been in the 80s. What was your other song? You said you had a few. Oh, it was a long time ago, but... Oh, we got, um, we're fine, we but, got but what used to happen <laughs> is, is you used to go in, there was always a fight on a Monday morning for the tambourine, and then the boss would say, here's the songs for today, and there'd be, like, three or four songs. And we'd have to sing the songs, and then, and then we'd have to face the window and throw all our negative thoughts out the window so we could go on the <laughs> So we used to say. Why don't you just hoover them up, the negative thing? <laughs> Did you get commission on, like, how many hoovers you sold? Uh, yeah. No, you know when you see those adverts in the paper and it'll be, like, uh, a youth sad and lonely? I used to be like that, but now I've got a speedboat, two girlfriends that are out in France. If you want to be like me, phone Chaz after seven. It was one of those. For a sales company when I was 16, but they used to give us a bottle of wine and a packet of Pro Plus every morning to motivate us. So <laughs> they do. Why are you Pro Plus? Plus? Whoa, you were pissed and on drugs selling life insurance. <laughs> so they did. That's what they did. So you never know. What do we so think? You don't know. I think he's lying. I think he's lying, Patsy. Let's say lie. Be... All right, we're saying lie. The team yeah. says a lie. We're saying lie. Okay. So uh, John Bishop, uh, were you telling the truth just then, or were you in fact telling a lie? I was telling the truth. <laughs> yes, it was true. Which means at the end of that round, it's uh, Lee in the lead by three points to two. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Mark. <laughs> welcome, Mark. Uh, so, first off, Patsy, what is Mark to you? This is Mark and he is currently teaching me to swim to overcome my fear of the water. Right. Lee, <laughs> this is Mark, and he started the pub darts team that I play in, but I had to ask him to leave cos he was so bad. <laughs> right, so, finally, Chris, your relationship with Mark. This is Mark. He is my next-door neighbour. He lost a bet of £200 that In The Loop would win an Oscar, so I gave him my wheelbarrow. Right, well, there we are. What could be simpler? Um, Patsy's swimming teacher, who cured her fear of water, Lee's sacked darts teammate, or Chris's neighbour, who likes a bet. David's team, where would you like to start? Um, mm. Darts. <laughs> How can anyone be bad at darts? Well, well, what sort of standard of darts yeah. playing are you expecting in this team? Two out of three darts in the board would have been good sufficient. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say to him to track him out? Patsy, can you be Mark? Yeah. <laughs> this might involve acting, but just go with it. <laughs> Mark? Yeah. That's you. Yeah, you're Mark. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know this whole darts thing? Yeah. And you keep missing the board? Mark, look at me when I'm talking to you, Mark. <laughs> we don't like the fact that you keep trying to get the uh, dog drunk. And also, <laughs> we, uh, we were going to have to let you go, because, unfortunately, you keep missing the board. <laughs> I cannot imagine you would I say that to him. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a chance you're going to say, listen, mate, yo, you set up the dark scene with Big Lee Max in the room, get off. <laughs> <laughs> Look, how seriously did you take this dark scene? I take darts very seriously. Do ask, you? Ask me any checkout. I, I don't know what that means. All right, yeah. <laughs> 151. Oh, well, that's, that's your classic uh, treble 20, treble 17 tops. Don't know whether um, that's through or not, but of course. All right, then 164. Oh, that'll be treble 20, treble 18 bull. <laughs> 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 I don't know how... Oh, what's bull? 180. You, you worked that <laughs> out. He's <laughs> 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 getting them right, he's getting them. Is, is he getting right. the numbers right? <laughs> right. Just, just yeah. say 180 again, Joe. 180. <laughs> I feel like we've just engaged with foreplay. <laughs> yeah. That's I know. Oh. She's missed 180, but I'm for a good one. Wait till I get to 69. <laughs> <laughs> Did we set up another team? 
Did he just walk away and say, I'll give up darts because Lee... He struggled to set up the other team, apparently, because he was going round saying, I'd like to set up a darts team. Have you had any experience? Well, I just recently left one because I was thrown out because <laughs> I was terrible. Sorry, <laughs> sounds like a great scene. <laughs> That's not the usual next question when somebody says, I'm thinking of setting up a darts team. Have you had any experience? You're either somebody <laughs> interested in playing a bit of recreational darts or not. You're not going to sort of go, have you had much experience? <laughs> I don't know, I'm a busy man. I want to play in a high-level darts team. Darts is a serious sport. <laughs> David, do you, want, do you want to move on? Yes, OK. Um, well, Chris, why did you feel the need when your next-door neighbour had bet some money on uh, a film you were involved in winning an Oscar? Why did you think you needed to make up the loss for him well, with the gift of a wheelbarrow? The, I live in a terrace house, and the houses next door to me are flats. It's a communal garden, and Mark is the only one who ever bothers to look after them. Mark's never seen the film. But he went to, to the book, he's put 200 quid on it and uh, lost it. In the conversation that we were discussing uh, this, uh, it came up that uh, he needed a wheelbarrow and, uh, and I, felt, I felt bad because he'd sort of staked it because so, it's so me. So if he just said I could do with a leg over, you'd just say, well, there's me missus. You know what I mean? I feel really bad about the bet. No, John. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know so how things work extreme. where you live, but wheelbarrows and women are not the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> where I'm from. You may well have given the wheelbarrow to assist him in clearing off the communal gardens, but surely you didn't give him the wheelbarrow as compensation for your film not winning the Oscar. I sort of intended to offer that he might borrow it. It kind of got out of hand. <laughs> OK, <laughs> now, Patsy, you, you have a fear of, of water, is that right? I did. Right. Yeah. What, what, have you had this all your life, or was there uh, some harrowing experience that you could amuse people yeah, with? Yeah, I think so, but I didn't really know that I had it. Right. How did you not know you were scared of what surrounds us? Because um, I've always <laughs> swam. But I just. You, you had swam, a... but you didn't know you were shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you wouldn't refuse to swim? No, I swam. So why we had you... to swim when we were kids. We just used to get. Put in, it was freezing cold. Don't you remember when they, the teachers used to make you get in? And that was worse then because it was freezing cold, kids would be crying, swimming, but they did actually Christ, make you get sounds in. Sounds like you're talking about Dunkirk. <laughs> <laughs> so you already could swim before you encountered Mark to teach you to swim? Yeah. <laughs> Right. How was your people. first lesson? When Mark said, he might, right, yeah. let's have a go at the water, and you did 20 lengths. What did he say? <laughs> yeah. I didn't do 20 lengths. So you decide you're going to have some lessons in order to improve the efficiency of, my, of your swimming, and then you get into the water and you realise, oh, my God, I hate it here. <laughs> this has been the problem. It wasn't the efficiency of my kicking and arms. It was that I hated it. <laughs> Actually, quite scared of water. That's why I don't swim very well. But you know what? I don't what breathe what did you do underwater. To help you out over no, none your of us breathe underwater. I mean, that's that's a standard human thing. No, you can breathe underwater. No, you can't. Oh, this should have been left in the This is basic stuff, television. It's just because I play out the dance team and you're looking for a new career. Telling people they can breathe underwater. Right. David, How was this? We, uh, we, 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 we need an answer. <laughs> Lee gives every impression of knowing a bit about darts, but then I'm, I'm perhaps not the best person to scrutinise that. He knows his darts, that doesn't mean that story's true. I believe Chris, because of the wheelbarrow, or I believe Patsy, because Mark looks quite built. So what are you going to say then, David? Who are you, you going to go for? Um, I'll go with Patsy. Yeah, I, go I think Patsy. I think Patsy, yeah. So, you're saying Patsy's uh, swimming instructor. Mark, would you like to reveal your true identity? Well, I am Patsy's swimming instructor, and I help to get over her fear of water. <laughs> The, the, the first thing I want to clear up is this, this, this thing of telling her that it is possible to breathe underwater. <laughs> That's not quite true. She does very good front crawl. Really? Good breathing technique and breathes out underwater, doesn't breathe in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but also against the clock. And again, they don't know whether they're about to read out a true fact about themselves or a made-up lie that they've never seen before. And uh, we're starting with... Uh, David. Ah, possession. Ah, now, take out a small box underneath the uh, desk there. 
have a look inside and show us what's there. <laughs> Smooth it. <laughs> <clears throat> this is my special travel dressing gown. <laughs> I'm contractually obliged to finish the car. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one item I always pack when I go on holiday. <clears throat> could you, uh, first things first, could we have the full modelling of the dressing gown, please? <laughs> Give us yeah. a nice twirl. Oh. Can we smell it? I think you should come out here, David, so you can see. <laughs> Enjoy the space. Uh, well, he's having trouble putting it on. It's, uh... <laughs> well, he's not abroad, he's confused. It's, um, have you forgotten the cord? The cord is missing. <clears throat> Yeah, just hold it as though it were done up so we get a proper okay, right idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you mind smoking a pipe and solve a crime? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love that. <laughs> Can I ask, Dave, where did you get it from? Uh, 1924. I think, <laughs> I think it's from uh, Marks and Spencers. Is it? What, what, did, did you say it's my special travel uh, dressing gown? Yes. Was I don't point? know if travel dressing gown is a technical term. But I have two dressing gowns. This is one. The other is a, is a, is a thicker toweling dressing gown, Ooh. which takes up more space in a suitcase. You take pajamas. Do you wear anything under it? Or... I, 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 yes, I usually... I feel sick. I, <laughs> <laughs> I usually... What I don't do is I don't tend to wear it over, you know, like, normal clothes like this. <laughs> this, this is, is like the worst oh, sexy chat like line it. I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'm naked under here. <laughs> to be honest, Lee, I don't know why you come into so many encounters with me expecting arousal. <laughs> Does that go with you at any trip or certain trips? No, only if I'm going to stay the night somewhere. Yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't think to... I didn't think you were walking around Dixon's in it. <laughs> I'd like you to take a guess, please. Is he telling the truth or is he constructing a lie? True. Patsy? True. Do you think it's true? Yeah. Chris? Based on, on, the, uh, on the design of the dressing gown and his demeanour, I think they fit. <laughs> so, Lee, what's it going to be? I, I'll, I'll go with my team. So You're going to say true. it's true. Yeah. David Mitchell, is it true or is it a lie? It is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it's true. Uh, that is David's uh, special cool. dressing gown. It's and just a dressing gown. I don't like, like special dressing gown. Like, I think it's got a personality. <laughs> it's David's special dressing gown. You are never going to get away from that now. Everyone who sees this show will look at you and see that. Look, forever. Basically, my entire image has been destroyed by this show. <laughs> I was like a cool guy who was into music and modern art before this show. <laughs> before all the stuff about dressing as an 18th century nobleman and having a little bell came out. <laughs> <laughs> the, travel, the travel dressing gown is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> So, just so we're in no doubt, that is David's special dressing gown. <laughs> Next. <coughs> uh, Lee. I once lost a game of swing ball to a chimpanzee. <laughs> David's team. OK. Um... Why were you with the chimpanzee? I was visiting a zoo in South Africa, and the trick that the chimpanzee could do was play swing ball. And we all took it in turns to have a go. And I'd had a few to drink, and Jim. he beat me. <laughs> what time of day was this? Time of day? Yes, I... Before the monkey's bedtime. <laughs> Are you refusing to answer? I'm not refusing, but I'm thinking about it for a while, because right. I don't know if you mean South African time or English time. <laughs> it's very similar, but I think there's an hour's difference. Do you mean the South African time? I mean the South African, the local okay. time. The local <laughs> time. I believe... Oh, sorry, you've thrown me a bit, because most times I tell people I've... Local time <laughs> in the zoo on the occasion of your match. I've been using this, I can't lie, over the years, I've been using this anecdote at the yeah. darts and things. Oh, did I ever tell you, lads, about the time I played yeah. uh, swing ball with a chimpanzee? No one's ever said, what time of day was this? <laughs> <laughs> he threw me for a second. Mm. Most people go, chimpanzee swing ball? <laughs> tell us more, you interesting person. <laughs> I suppose what's different is that while when you tell that as an anecdote in the pub, people go, it's polite to go along with the bullshit that Lee talks. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you in South Africa? 
Don't, don't tell no, the f- the time of day. The time of day. The time of day. Uh, Make up a time of day. I, I couldn't beat a chimpanzee swim ball because swim I was drunk. How am I going to remember the time of day? Oh, oh, my my God. God. I'm terrible at this, and this only quarters of three. three. <laughs> And a zoo pissed. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's, not, it's not a usual oh, yeah. post pub trip. Oh, oh, let's have a few jars. I'll tell you what, well, I we... fancy a trip round the zoo. Around <laughs> <laughs> about one in the morning, they get the chimp out. <laughs> British Museum for Stag Weekends. <laughs> but zoos aren't open after the pub. <laughs> no, no, we went, we, it was afternoon. You know, we've been drinking since the you morning. Had, you had a boozy lunch. We had a Did boozy you? morning. We started at 11. Arrest me. Right. <laughs> Why didn't you go and see, like, some strippers? Wouldn't a load of men well, go, we thought, oh, we were that drunk. We thought we were. We thought that was a pole. We thought we were. This is the rubbish pole dancing club. Pole dancing. She hasn't got any tits. She hasn't shaved for ages. Swing ball playing chimpanzee. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why she wasn't letting me put ten quid in a bra. <laughs> David, before someone follows the RSPCA, it was a consenting chimpanzee. We're not. It wasn't. Forced. I don't think he'd said. Look, you know, I'm, yeah. I quite like it here at the zoo. But really, what would make it peachy is if I could take on some of the uh, visitors, ideally at swing ball, badminton at a push. I don't think that happened. Well, he had no choice. Well, uh, since he had no choice. That's my point. Choice. Right. <laughs> Is it the truth or is it a lie? I thought it was a lie. Right. But it seems the sort of thing he'd do. What? <laughs> uh, I think it's a lie, but I'm happy to be... Yeah, I'll, I'll go, I'll go with lie. lie. We'll go yeah. with lie. We all say it's a lie. Yeah. yeah. All right. Lee, truth or lie? It is, in fact, a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um... It is a lie. Uh, Lee has never lost a game of swing ball to a chimpanzee. Uh, for the record, it was Scrabble. <laughs> uh, that noise signals time's up and it's the end of the show. And I can reveal that uh, David's team have five points, but Victor's with seven are Lee's team. <laughs> But, of course, it's not just a team game, and my individual lie of the week is Joanna Page! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Joanna Page. And let me assure you that that's not favouritism because she's Welsh. Diawn Jo Croesi Mynd, if I can already be the lag and done anything already. No, I see the club to get a fringe, I'm nice here. Good night. <laughs> You, the show that tests our panellists' ability to lie. On Lee Mac's team tonight, we have a rock star physicist, which means he can throw a TV out of a window whilst calculating its speed of trajectory. <laughs> From wonders of the solar system is Professor Brian Cox. <laughs> and a young Scottish comedian who's the funniest thing to happen to Glasgow since it was named European Capital of Culture. <laughs> Kevin Bridges. And uh, on David Mitchell's team, uh, someone who spent the last three years in a coma, reliving the 80s. 
No, it's not Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> From Ashes to Ashes, Keely Hawes! <laughs> and a comedy actor who went to university with Rachel Weisz and Sam Mendes, so he's perfectly comfortable in the company of major stars. <laughs> this will be a bit different for you tonight. It's uh, Stephen Mangan! <laughs> And so, to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so have no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And, uh, first up is the mighty Stephen Mango Mangan. <laughs> right. I have nicknames for both my big toes. <laughs> Please, team. What do you think? What's, what's the nicknames? Leslie and Scruple. I oh, was <laughs> scruple. Scruple. Yeah. Why scruple? Leslie was. Uh, uh, um, this is Leslie was the nickname my <coughs> me and my first girlfriend had for our our baby that we were going to have. We were planned about getting married and having a kid, and we were going to call it Leslie. It's a joke because it's you know it's a nice name, but we weren't actually going to call it Leslie. And then one day, <laughs> one day the foot was out the end of the bed, and <laughs> <laughs> and you thought let's try for that baby. <laughs> So there it is, and she said, uh, you know, there's Leslie. It was just, a, you know, it was just stuck. And what about Scruple? Oh, this is ridiculous. This is, there was a kind of, uh, she was very religious, and she used to believe <laughs> there was an angel. You had an angel of, you had Steve, a, you know, a good angel. Steve, to think about this? <laughs> <laughs> you have a good angel and a bad angel on your shoulder who, uh, you know, when you're about to do something awful, yeah. will say, don't do it, or do do it. Well, you like, go on national television saying you've got a nickname for your toe, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> so, Leslie, our baby, yeah. we, wanted it, we, wanted, it, we wanted it to have a, the good angel to be dominant. We wanted, it to ha we wanted Leslie to have scruples. <laughs> so the other toe became scruple. <laughs> <laughs> it was Leslie's kind of conscious. This is how religions get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> He's an absolute genius. Uh, <laughs> and I would imagine it's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, you, what are you saying then, uh, Lee? It's, it's got to be true. You think it's, it's got to be true? It's got to be true. It's got to be. Kevin? I think it's true. Still I think, think it's true. true. And you think it's true? I do. And you're a professor. I do. do we call you doctor or professor? Uh, whatever you'd like. <laughs> so what are you going to say? I'll go with the team and say that's true. Saying it's true. OK. Steve Mangan, is it true or is it a lie? It is a lie. <laughs> Very good. Oh. Yes, it's a lie. Uh, Stephen does not have nicknames for both his big toes. A bit weird to give uh, your body parts silly names. As I said to my Lee Mack in the bath just the other day. <laughs> <laughs> my penis. <laughs> um... <laughs> Keely Horse is next. I lied to my husband that I was good at tennis and had to have secret lessons when he arranged a doubles match. <laughs> Ooh, all right, there we are. Uh, Lee? Why, why would you lie to your husband? Uh, about because that? he wasn't my husband at the time, and I was trying to... Woo him? Woo him. <laughs> He's very sporty, so... I, I mean, I told him I could ski. <laughs> and then we told and him is I could he subsequently tennis. asked you to go skiing? He took me skiing. Did you have to learn to ski? It was truly terrible. Well, somebody called Eust actually taught me how to ski. Eust? I can recommend Eust. <laughs> <laughs> skiing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, no, I, I, so I, I went and booked some lessons. And um, what was he called, the instructor? Um, I, God, I can't remember. And yet Eust, like that. <laughs> yeah, but Eust was like... <laughs> Keely, you, you Keely, keep, keep it together, it's falling yeah, apart. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I can't remember. <clears throat> what was the first thing you learnt on the tennis court? Um, how to bounce the ball. And how do you bounce the ball? <laughs> <laughs> that was a quick what bounce. What do you mean? Well, it's only that it big and it's only there to there. <laughs> well, I think, uh, you tell her, gravity would have taken a bit longer to get down. Or not, <laughs> <laughs> you we get played on the moon. It's not just gravity, you can get... Bit of force. You can impart an impulse to it. Yeah. That's it, impart an impulse. The rate of change of momentum is proportional. Don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> did you uh, did you win? I got there and I feigned <laughs> um, an, an ankle problem. What? what because I saw when I got there 
how good they were going to be. So <laughs> it, was, it was to impress him. I didn't think he'd start involving other people. Is he, is he a man for involving other people in general? <laughs> We're not at a physicist's convention now. <laughs> we'll keep this clean, please. Yeah. <laughs> now, listen here, listen here. Did your husband ever, ever find out about these uh, secret lessons? I told him. You came clean. I came clean um, <laughs> on the night that I made him dinner, pretended that I'd cooked it, and then he... <laughs> <laughs> And then he found the Tesco Express box. Oh, no. And then it all came out. Did it? I said, I can't play tennis and I, and I can't cook. My name's and... not Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... <laughs> so what are you going to say, Lee? Truth or lie? Yeah, true or lie? I think it's true. I, I, believe, it's I true. believe that. What do we think? True. I'll have to go with the team then. I'll say that. So you're team. saying it's true? Oh, all right. Uh, Keely, truth or lie? It's absolutely true. <laughs> ah, well done, sir. I was about to know. That's worse. Yes, it's true. He did lie to her husband that she was good at tennis and she did have to have secret lessons when he arranged a doubles match. Um, I had a relationship go wrong because I couldn't play tennis. Looking back, I should never have told that bloke I was Sue Barker. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you're next. I once accidentally bought a horse. Sorry? <laughs> you bought a what? A horse. A horse! Sorry, I missed the S. Um... <laughs> you claim that you once accidentally bought a horse. Am I right? You're right. Right, fine. We're all clear. <laughs> Under what circumstances? What did you think you were buying? Um, I never thought I was buying anything. I thought I was <laughs> renting. <laughs> a horse. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> so you, you paid to rent a horse and then at the end when you tried to return the horse they said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I've been trying to get rid of Psycho for years. <laughs> That's pretty much it. How long had you imagined that you were going to rent it for? Uh, we thought we were going to rent it for like, 25 minutes. And did they charge? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was in Bulgaria. On holiday. <laughs> OK, so what did it cost in local Bulgarian currency? What is the local Bulgarian currency? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it was... We're, we're gonna it was 200 lev. <laughs> lev, L-E-V. I don't know how you pronounce it, but lev. 200 lev. 200 and how, Bulgarian... how much is that in, in sterling, roughly? Roughly, I at think the time. About, at the time, I think it was about £90. So we thought so it was you... a good deal. Ninety pounds for twenty-five minutes. For twenty-five minutes on a horse. But you said we thought we were going to rent it for twenty-five minutes. There was me and my friend. So you were. It was gonna a lads' holiday. We were eighteen. We thought we'd go horse riding. <laughs> In Bulgaria. In Bulgaria. Did you question the odd sort of time slots they were going for? I mean, guy... I've never been pony <laughs> trekking, but I imagine they sort of rent you the horse for perhaps a couple of hours. Well, the or, guy... or at least a solid half hour. You get twenty-five minutes, and then the horse needs a break. For five minutes, and then something else And then else you comes. keep the horse forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never knew that. What happened when you tried to take it back? Um, the guy explained to us that it, the guy was gone. The guy... <laughs> <laughs> the guy explained to us he was gone. Never say the phrase on this game. The guy explained to us that he'd gone. Well, there was two. <laughs> never say that. There was two different guys. There was two yeah, guys. Yeah, me if you want to speak to my client. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are. We are there was guys. There was guy A. Guy A. A. That's, he was... a. That's a Bulgarian name. It's very well known. Yeah. <laughs> the most famous Bulgarian name. Yeah. Right. Guy Dimitri. I think that. No, a guy A. <laughs> <laughs> and guy B. Right. right. We thought we were going horse riding and we were heading towards the place where you actually hire the horse. Stables. The, yeah. the official. <laughs> <laughs> the stables. Right. <laughs> He's making it up, and I'm on his team. <laughs> <laughs> but a patience, Brian. Come on, Brian. We met a guy on the way who had a horse, and we thought he was doing that thing, no, you in Asda, when you've got a shopping trolley, and you're taking it back, and somebody else needs a trolley, and you say, I'll join that one. 
<laughs> so we thought the guy was saying, I'm to go all the way to the actual stable. I'm Official. from the stable. Yeah. So just hire this horse. That's what the guy said? Yeah. So we thought, all right, that there was a bit of a communication breakdown. There was a Bulgarian guy trying to speak English and two Scottish guys trying to speak English. <laughs> so <laughs> we thought the guy had gave us the horse to ride and come back yeah. in 25 minutes. Were you minutes. not surprised? That, I mean, I've never been on holiday to Bulgaria, but I imagine that things would be a bit cheaper in Bulgaria than in Britain. Were you not surprised that it cost you the equivalent of £90 to hire a horse for 25 minutes? <laughs> it was 25 minutes each, so it was two of us. Yeah. Right. So we chipped in for a horse. For called? 25 minutes each. But still, even if you thought you were going to get 25 minutes each, that's a lot, isn't it? Oh, it's an hour. You need to give the horse a break, as I said. <laughs> Let's forget about the 25 minutes. Just forget, about the, Just forget that's about the horse. Bullshit. That's absolutely, <laughs> obviously bullshit. <laughs> you, you take the horse back. Guy B, who's the guy you met on the way to the stables... He's gone. He's, he's gone. gone. He's no gone. sign of him. No, no, he's gone. So you say to Guy A, well, we hired this as part of your not bothering to actually go to the stables but getting it a few hundred yards away <laughs> scheme. <laughs> we hired this horse for 25 minutes at an extortionate rate. <laughs> Nevertheless, here it is. <laughs> and what did he say? <laughs> We went back to the place where we picked up the horse. Oh, so not to the stable, no. but to the random place right. in the road. <laughs> the random yards in the stable. So you, bewilderedly, where has the mysterious man gone? I would have thought that logically, when you were returning, having thought that it had come from the stable, <laughs> but you'd been lucky not to have to walk to the stable before hiring it, you might nevertheless have thought, well, the stable's where it's got to go back to, yeah. rather than, well, Sodom, <laughs> this is where we picked it up from. I'm not actually taking the stable. I'm going to stand here. Point locals start waving, going, No! You keep! <laughs> Kevin, 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 look, look at me, look at me. You're taking the horse back. Look at me! <laughs> what happened next? Oh, man. Uh, Come on, Kevin. Come on! Great. So, where are we taking off from? You're taking the horse back. Say, no. well, let's, great. let's go back to the start. <laughs> Kevin Bridges, for the love of God, <laughs> please tell us what happened. Right. We bought a horse. <laughs> we thought we'd rented the horse. We'd done the horse riding, took it back to the initial place we picked up the horse. Yes. Locals explained we'd went to a counterfeit horse guy. It wasn't the <laughs> official horse riding stable. <laughs> this was a counterfeit horse. <laughs> This wasn't a genuine horse. This was maybe two guys in a costume. That would explain the 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I can't do 25 minutes. <laughs> the, the, giveaway, the giveaway was after 25 minutes, I won't win. Uh. <laughs> right, let's crack on, lads. <laughs> So, David's team, what do you think? <laughs> Truth or lie? <laughs> I mean, the trouble with this game is it plays tricks with your mind. <laughs> but I don't think it's true. You, you don't really it's think... It's got to be, hasn't it? It's got to, got to be a lie. It's got to be a it's lie. Got, yeah. You're saying it's a lie. Right, so here we go. This... It really is. Here's the moment. <laughs> this is more than any other episode I've done of this show. <laughs> this is the moment we've waited for. <laughs> Bridges, is it true or is it a lie? It's true. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> right. Uh... Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of Lee's team will claim that it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please give a warm welcome to this week's special guest, Drac. <laughs> welcome, Drac. So, Kevin, what is Drac to you? This is Drac, he's my dad's friend. He took me out for a driving lesson and I reversed through a chip shop window. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Brian, please explain how you know Drac. Well, this is Drac, the roadie that left me gaffer taped to a lighting rig for over an hour. <laughs> right. And finally, Lee, what's your connection? This is Drac. And I presented him with first prize at the National Pie Awards 2009. <laughs> so, David's team, begin your investigation. Um, Lee, where were the National Pie Awards held? Birmingham. What was the venue? The venue was the Hilton Hotel. Right. Hilton what kind Hotel of pie was it? Well, he made, he made a selection. He didn't just make one pie. It was for his, his, his various pies. You don't, you don't just have one pie. It's so not he was, like... Was he various pie maker of the year? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was, he was... He won the overall, the big prize at the end. National pie maker of the year. So he won the overall award? Were there, like, separate... No, he didn't have the best overall. <laughs> <laughs> What were, the, what were the separate awards? Were they, were they like apple pie, steak and kidney pie, and then Drac won the big, you know, like best film, best pie? <laughs> you don't just have one pie, you have to have, I think, two or you three have to, I think I think we understand that you have to demonstrate the ability to reproduce the pie. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it literally is just one pie. <laughs> as soon as the judges have tasted it, well, what does it matter? <laughs> that was a pie, that pie's gone. <laughs> It was two or three pies he produced that year, but I, uh, I two don't or three. I, I think he wants to up production, actually. <laughs> <laughs> They've done the pie tasting and judging on another occasion. Yeah, they'd voted on it. People had voted on it, and it was like a pop chart. It's a pie but chart. He, he brought... <laughs> it was, um, it was, um, you like the pie chart, Captain? Oh, no. I thought you'd like it. Did you announce then the winner is Drac, or did you say his full name, which is...? Uh, I said the winner is Drac. <laughs> What about Brian and uh, Brian gaffer Kevin. taped to a lighting rig for how long? <laughs> uh, over an hour. Over an hour. Why, may I ask, were you gaffer taped to a lighting rig in the first place? I was the youngest member of the band, and I was probably not behaving in a way deemed appropriate for a, a member of a band in the presence of road crew. <laughs> what were you doing? I don't remember. I think I was just being a general, you know. How did you get down? Pain. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had to get me down because it's a, it's a lighting rig. It was like one of one of these. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Drac on his own. It's <laughs> <laughs> around you because you were doing something you shouldn't be doing, mm. like maths homework. <laughs> he carries you up a ladder to a lighting rig no. twenty meters above the stage, and then he gaffered you round. He was the tour manager, actually. So he, he ordered the rest of the crew to to put me on the ground, gaffer me up into a bowl. Put a harness on and then, and then attached me to lighting rig at the Hammersmith Odeon and left me there for over an hour. Was that when you wrote Things Can Only Get Better? <laughs> <laughs> and you can't remember what you did that had offended them? No, I think it was just a build up, I think, of absolute annoyance <laughs> over many weeks. Oh, I sure. can believe it. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so, uh, Kevin Bridges, uh, it was something to do with the car. Well, yes, it's, he's a friend of your dad's and he took you on a driving lesson. Yeah. And you ended up reversing through a chip shop window. Yeah. <laughs> His name's Duncan. Duncan. He gets called Drac because it's, like, D-R-A-C, and he used to be known as Duncan from the R-A-C because he's a driving instructor, and then that got shortened to... <laughs> <laughs> what, what, were you trying to do a three-point turn? What, what was...? <laughs> no, it was just... It was the first lesson. Right. And we thought we'd do reversing, because that's track strategy. As soon as you, if once you've learned going backwards, going <laughs> forwards is <laughs> a piece of cake. It's the way he sees life and the way he sees driving tuition. But <laughs> right. you've got a chip shop by the side of a road. So yeah. the car is not facing the front of the back of the car is normally not facing a chip shop, is it? No, it was so in the car park of the chip shop. Oh, a chip, chip shop, shop with a car park? <laughs> <laughs> Have you not been to Scotland before, David? <laughs> So this is like a kind of IKEA scale. It's a chip massive shop. chip shop. I, used to, I walked. I walked in the chip shop. So you're in the car park by the chip, chip shop, shop window. Yeah. And you get in the car for the first driving lesson, and he says, first things first, reverse it." <laughs> so why didn't he press the brake when he saw you hurtling he backwards busy, towards the chip he shop? He was busy trying to design his new pork pie. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> right, David C, we, we, need, we need an answer. Is Drac Kevin's driving instructor, Brian's gaffer taping roadie, or Lee's prize winning pie maker? What are you going to say? 
I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> well, I, Kevin's story sounds implausible, but we've been down this road before. <laughs> surprise me. <laughs> if he said he'd unscrewed his leg and it had walked yeah. China on its own, I believe <laughs> Leading a corporate... Isn't Pies a bit... He's northern, he's doing a pie handing out prize, isn't it? But, but then again, if you're doing the pie awards... Yeah. That's... Who would you go to other than Lee <laughs> Mac? <laughs> you just said that to camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him some available yeah. dates. I'll give him some available dates. <laughs> And what about Brian's? Very good specific story about the, the winch and the Hammersmith Odeon and... Yeah. But it does seem quite a cruel thing to do. I think he probably... <laughs> could have been irritating enough for them yeah, to Yeah, I winch. think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's in question, I to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> What's it going to be? Say Brian. Say Brian. Yeah, come on. Brian. Come we on. think it's Brian. You're saying Brian? Yes. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Drac. I'm the roadie that gaffer takes oh! Brian to the fighting trust. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on, Drac. So, at the end of that round, David's team have four points and Lee's team have two. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth but also against the clock. So, we start with... No, oh, it's David. <clears throat> I've had to prise open my bedroom door for the last two years ever since the door handle fell off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you use to prise open the door? Uh, just my fingernails. <laughs> and I, you have to go to the top of the, the door jam. Is it an out or a no, it's, it's all it depends which side. <laughs> <laughs> Do you live on your own? I can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 sh I have a flatmate, but it's just my bedroom, yeah. It's only you that has the income. So you have to do... I'm, I'm absolutely the only person who ever needs to get in or out. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks to me with a, with a stare, and I don't know... It's just, you know, don't a say look anything. of resignation. <laughs> Why haven't you just whipped out a knob and affixed it to the entrance? <laughs> uh, basically, it wouldn't... It's not really... You can't just screw it back on because the holes that the screws... Uh, the thread's gone. That's it! <laughs> uh, Keely, speaking as the only woman, uh, in your single days before you settled oh, down... Oh, God! And yes. you would... You'd have been... You'd met as David and you'd be getting on like a wildfire and he said, well, why don't you come back to my... I know you don't like it. I know you don't like it. It's either this or Ronnie Corbett. Right. Um, why, don't, why don't you come back to my uh, apartment and uh, we could settle down and have a game of Boggle? So... <laughs> so you, you go there, you go there... And... And he says, well, why don't we go upstairs? And you go upstairs and you get to the door <laughs> and there's no handle <laughs> or knob. Would that put you off? This actually happened to me once. David! <laughs> David! <laughs> You're a dark horse. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> in the morning to leave, I couldn't get out. <laughs> and I didn't know where I was. You didn't know where you were? <laughs> wow, really? Well, I had to ring the fire brigade. I, I think I, I should say, this, point, this was not at my house. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to come and put a ladder out to the window and give me a fireman's lift where, out. Where was the man who's how, who you'd gone oh, back he'd with? he'd gone to work. He'd gone to work so and locked you in for later. Know. Didn't know. <laughs> She'll keep till I get back. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. OK, what are you going to say, Lee? I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? It looks it... like a man that's got well-maintained doors. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say it's a lie. OK, yeah. then we'll say it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. David Mitchell, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. David has had to prise open his bedroom door for the last two years, ever since the door handle fell off. <laughs> and next... Uh, oh, it's Lee. Possession. 
All oh, right, take out the box, pop it on the desk and uh, read the card. It's a set of children's cutlery. This is the children's cutlery I used when I went on a special diet. It helped to make the portions on my plate seem bigger. <laughs> David's team, do you believe that? <laughs> so leave. How long did you use the, the cutlery for, then? Well, if it was a big meal, ten minutes. <laughs> in, ter in terms of weeks or months? How well, long nothing did... was that big. <laughs> <laughs> how long was the period of your life <laughs> for which you used children's cutlery in order to lose weight? <laughs> the period, the period. I know it doesn't take you that long to invent six months. Six months. <laughs> did you sort of take them, if you were going to a restaurant, did you take them with you? No, I think you mixed me up with a lunatic. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not a great... I mean, Keely, would you really want that on a date if I said, so, how did the tennis go, love? <laughs> <laughs> I could take it into the bedroom and go, you don't think it's big? Look at it against this. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a salad fork, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> you ever... <laughs> and what, what gave you Images. the idea? Where was the inspiration for this? I read it in a book. You read it in a book? Yes. Which book was that? The Book of Dieting. <laughs> It was a big book of stupid dieting. <laughs> <laughs> right, David, what do you it's think? A lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> right, Keely, are you in agreement with L the rest I of the team? I think that's a lie. It... So you're saying no? OK. Lee Mack, uh, were you telling the truth there? Um, it was a lie. No. <laughs> What a shock. It was a lie. Lee did not go on a diet which involved using children's cutlery for every meal to make his portion seem bigger. <laughs> oh, that noise signals time is up. And I can reveal that David's team has triumphed by seven points to four. <laughs> but, of course, it's not just a team game. And my individual liar of the week this week is Kevin Bridges. <laughs> yes. A fine achievement for a young man of 24. As a Glaswegian, he can look back on that with satisfaction for the rest of his life. Another ten years. <laughs> Good night.